crazy. As long as I make my little corner of the world sane. Welcome to Remembering Kobe Bryant. Tonight, the entire sports world and all of Los Angeles are in mourning with the tragic loss of a transcendent talent, Lakers legend Kobe Bryant. Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, were on their way to a travel basketball game at Bryant's Mamba Academy this morning when the helicopter they were traveling in crashed and burst into flames upon impact. All nine people on board were killed. In addition to Kobe and his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, seven others also lost their lives in the crash, including pilot Ara Zabayan, including John Altabelli, the baseball coach at Orange Coast College as well, his wife, Carrie, and their 13-year-old daughter, Alyssa. Altabelli was the national coach of the year last season. Christina Mauser, who coached Kobe's daughter at a private school in Orange County, was also confirmed among the victims. I'm Greg Wolf with Jim Hill on a very difficult day here in Los Angeles, dealing with the loss of a legend and someone, Jim, who meant so much to the city here. You knew him as well as anybody who covered sports in this market. What are you going to remember most about Kobe? The thing I will remember the most is his passion. The passion that Kobe had for basketball, the passion Kobe had for life, the passion Kobe had for his family. We all know that he was a fabulous basketball player. Hall of Fame caliber, we knew that as soon as he stepped onto the basketball court. But his pride and joy, the love of his life was his family and his daughters. We would tease him about having a whole lot, a house full of ladies and, around him. And he said, man, that's the only way to go. That's the only way to have it. He, he, he exemplified what hard work is really all about. He exemplified what a pro is all about. He exemplified what a family man, what a father, what a, what a husband uh, is, is, uh, is supposed to be. We shall always relish and cherish uh, having Kobe Bryant in our midst because the likes of a Kobe Bryant shall never pass our way again. And it was his daughter, Gianna, who, who we see with him at these games that really kept him sort of in the game over mm -hmm. these, these past couple of years. You and I were both at games together when Kobe was there courtside. You could feel there was a different energy in the building when he was there. And it wasn't just with the fans, was it? No, it was with the players because the players knew Kobe was in the audience. Not only was he in the audience, he was sitting courtside. And when Kobe was sitting courtside, you can believe it, you could just see the players. They would all look, look over there and kind of peek at him, and then he would wave, and they would wave back at each other, and they would go over and hug each other. And it, it was really amazing when you would see LeBron, see Kobe, and vice versa. They would always get up and go and hug each other and say, you know, thank you and things like that. Um, their game stepped up the night Kobe was at courtside, no matter who it was, whether it was the Lakers or the visiting team, or when the Lakers were playing the Clippers. Uh, he brought out the best in everyone on the court because when you think about it, these men that are playing in the NBA today, when they were growing up, Kobe Bryant was their role model and their hero. And so when you have someone that is that talented and someone who can stop traffic when he walks across the street, then whenever he is in your presence or you're in his presence, you want to impress him with your talents like many of the basketball players have done and tried to do had countless clutch moments in his career. Too many that we can talk about right here. One of them, though, and maybe it was the greatest finale in the history of the NBA, that final game in, in 2016 when he went for 60 points yeah. against Utah. What do you remember about that night? I remember the post-game uh, speech by Kobe on the court when he said, Mamba out. I mean, everything else, I mean, he was building up and building and building and building, and we could just see that the Lakers were going to make sure that he went out on a winning note. And he had the great form and passion. And we see Jack Nicholson there, who was a, a great friend. Of everything that Kobe did that night, it was Kobe-esque. But I will never, ever forget the game that he played. The room was fabulous. The passion from the fans and from the teams were incredible. But after the uh, game was over and he went up and had his, la his farewell speech, the last thing he said was, Mamba out, which meant to me, he was through with pro basketball. He was moving on to some other state. There it is right there when he said, Mamba out. And he knew what he was going to do 
with his post-basketball career. One of the more incredible athletes we will ever, ever have the grace of covering and seeing and watching play. And like we said, the likes of Kobe Bryant will never pass our way again. And from the moment, from the very moment a 17-year-old Kobe Bryant put on a Laker jersey, there was something extra special about the young man from Lower Marion. And after 20 years, after 20 years in purple and gold, Kobe not only left an indelible mark on the team and the league, but transcended the sport he played as a global superstar. And it wasn't just his legendary accomplishments on the court, but his lasting impact off it as well that leaves behind a legacy few will ever match. Few players seemed as destined for greatness as Kobe Bryant. The son of an NBA player, born August the 23rd, 1978, Kobe rose to prominence as a high school star out of Lower Marion just outside of Philadelphia. He became the first guard ever to make the jump from high school to the NBA. Lakers general manager Jerry West became infatuated with the 17-year-old. You could see the, the fierce burning desire that he had uh, to not only be great, but he had a competitive nature that he knew he was going to get better. West acquired the draft rights to Kobe, pairing him with Shaquille O'Neal to form one of the most iconic duos in NBA history. When I was signing in Atlanta during the Olympics, Jerry West said, hey, I'm about to get this ATLK Kobe Bryant. Nobody really knows about But you and him will definitely, this is what he told me, you'll definitely be better than Magic and Kareem, and you'll definitely win multiple championships. But winning didn't come easy for Kobe, most notably in the 1997 Western Conference semifinals against the Utah Jazz. Pull out, shot on the way, no good. Bryant for three, it's sure to be an seven seconds. He was a different kind of animal, and I knew he was a different kind of animal in the Utah series when he took those three shots. Nobody else wanted to take them because I knew one day he was going to be a beast. But his unrelenting confidence at such a young age gave us all a glimpse of what was to come. Under the guidance of Phil Jackson, Kobe and Shaq began to deliver on the promise they'd shown leading up to their first NBA championship in the year 2000. then went on to complete a three-peat in 2001 and 2002, cementing their status as one of the most dominant duos in sports history. During that same time, Kobe met his future wife, Vanessa, marrying her in April of 2001. They welcomed their first daughter, Natalia, in January of 2003 before having three more girls, Gianna, Bianca, and Capri. But Kobe wasn't without his personal failings. You see, Bryant was arrested for sexual assault in 2003 before the charges were dropped in 2004. A tumultuous year came to a close with a disappointing loss to the Detroit Pistons in the 2004 NBA Finals. Bryant yearned to prove himself individually, and O'Neal was traded to Miami. And Kobe's singular greatness was never more apparent than on one incredible Sunday evening in January of 2006. Kobe Bryant, 28 for 46 from the field. This would be 18 for 20 from the line and an 81 point game. Listen to this crowd for number eight, Kobe Bryant. But it wasn't until the addition of Paul Gasol in 2008 that Kobe returned to the NBA's grandest stage. And after falling to the Celtics in the finals that season, the Lakers won back-to-back -back championships in 2009 and 2010, with Bryant winning finals MVP both times. Kobe continued to chase a sixth NBA championship to match his idol Michael Jordan before injuries derailed his quest, ultimately by a torn Achilles tendon in April of 2013. But in a move that couldn't have defined the Mamba mentality anymore, Kobe returned to the court to sink a pair of free throws. Bryant never returned to his athletic apex, but managed to pull off one last performance for the ages in his final game. A But the end of his basketball journey was the beginning of another. After years in front of the camera during his legendary Laker career, Kobe transitioned to a job behind the camera, founding Granity Studios, a multimedia storytelling company. Brian attacked his new profession with the same drive and passion 
as the one that made him a global superstar producing a variety of content, reaching the peak of his new craft by winning an Oscar in 2018 for his animated short film, Dear Basketball. Basketball players, we're really supposed to shut up and dribble, but I'm glad, I'm glad we do a little bit more than that. Um, thank you, Academy, for this amazing honor. Kobe returned to Staples Center in December of 2017 to see both of his iconic numbers, 8 and 24, retired in the rafters. And the closest he got to the basketball court in retirement was coaching his daughter Gianna's AAU basketball team, naturally called the Mamas. No athlete in history belongs to Los Angeles more than Kobe Bryant. In a city of stars, his was the brightest of them all. From a precocious teenager to a relentless champion on the court, an Oscar winner, but more importantly, a husband and father, few have lived a life as full as Kobe being Bryant. One of the other things that I will always remember, there are a lot of them that I remember about Kobe is when he started writing books. And here's a book, it's called Legacy and the Queen. And in it, he mentions his four daughters. And then he says, when you fiercely protect your passion, no one can ever steal your dreams. That kind of sums it all up right there. He, there'll never be another one like it. And we, uh, we're all better off for having known him and having seen him perform not only on the basketball court, but in a business, as a businessman, more importantly, as a family man. And just seeing him, when you're at Staples Center, seeing that smile, it, it, it could light up the entire stadium. I mean, it, it, it's really amazing. He is, he is more popular in his post-basketball career than he was when he was playing. Because when he walked in, everybody knew Kobe was in the house. Everybody stood up and started applauding and, and things like that. And, and the, the opposition, guys on the other teams, and even on guys from the Lakers, they would their level of play that particular night would rise up to another level because they knew Kobe was in the house. No question. Kobe Bryant gone way too young at the age of 41. He's survived by his wife, Vanessa, and daughters, Natalia, Bianca, and newborn Capri, who was just born last June. We'll be back with more on the life, legacy, and reaction to Kobe's passing next.